This will blow your mind. 400 players are risking their lives by competing in Twisted Children games to get a chance of winning $40 billion. It sounds like any other survival movie, but there's actually more to it. Why? Because the story is fucking good, and every game will put your strength and brain to the test. What do you do in such situations? This will make you use every brain cell you have, as I'm going to break down what you should do in how to beat every twisted game in Squid Game. And by the end, I will show you how to beat every death game that they had to fix. You are in a subway station when a well-dressed salesman invites you to a survival game that will earn you enough money to solve all your problems. Considering the situation and the depths you are living in, you decide to enter the game. After being carried while unconscious to a mysterious location, you awake in a dorm where everyone is identified by numbers printed on their uniforms. There are 456 players. A group of masked men then narrates the game rules. Each player will participate in six different games over six days. Those who win all six games will receive a handsome cash prize. Everyone signed in an agreement and then proceeded to the first game. In the game field, you notice a strange doll in the distance before a broadcast started explaining the rules. The game is red light green. Green light. You can move forward when it shouts out green light, red light. If your movement is detected afterwards, you will be eliminated. This game is based on a Japanese folklore children game, Daruma Sanga Koronda. One person is the Oni, which means demon. Instead of counting to 10, the Oni says Daruma Sanga Koronda, which means the Dharma doll fell over. For the other players, they have to sneak up on the Oni and tag it before it turns around and sees them. But in this version, those who cross the finish line without getting caught in 5 minutes pass this round. Those who fail... As people started panicking, everyone started running for the exit, but no one can stop the game once it starts. Almost half the players have been eliminated while trying to run away, and the rest are terrified to even move an inch. But the time is ticking, and you can't stay like this forever. Players started regaining their confidence. They started moving few steps every time instead of rushing toward the door and struggling to stop. But this is not enough. You need a strategy to increase your chances of winning. What if you make a mistake and get detected after the doll's turned? Analyzing the situation, you should be able to notice that since the doll have a motion detector, any obstacle in between can help preventing the doll from detecting your movement. But there are no objects in the field to use as obstacles, which only leaves you with one solution. Hiding behind players' backs. A few seconds are remaining and you are almost there, but mistakes happen. As you are running in the last seconds, you trip on someone's body. The doll is turning its head, but just in time, someone behind you saves you by catching you from the collar. Then you both finish the game in the last seconds. But if there is something you learned from this first game, is that you need a team. Everyone is terrified, and more than half of the players are dead. Some survivors beg to leave, and according to the third clause of the game's agreement, if the majority agree to end the games, all players will be sent home. But before the voting starts, the cash prize started coming down from above, as a light of salvation. Many players started to hesitate to end the game here. In the end, the result of the vote was to end the game here, and it was decided by a one-vote difference. But the masked staff announced that for those who are still willing to continue playing the game, they will be given another chance. After going back to your daily life, you find out that nothing has changed. You still live in the same shitty life where money means everything, and you decide to go back to the Squid Game. After waking up in the dorms, you recognize many familiar faces and decide to form a team with them. The second game is about to start. You have to choose a shape from four shapes. Circle, triangle, star, and an umbrella. You choose randomly the umbrella shape since you have no idea what the game gonna be about. Then, the game is announced. It's Sugar Honeycomb, a game where you pick a stamped shape out of a honeycomb using only a needle. You f***ed up. You ended up with the hardest shape, but this is not entirely a luck-based game. You still can pick the umbrella snack if you are delicate when picking, but that's not enough. You need to increase the chances again. A girl snuck a lighter into the game and used it to heal the needle to make it easier to cut through the sugar honeycomb. But since you don't have a lighter, you come up with another idea. The snacks are made of sugar. If you lick them, they become more wet and flabby. So if you keep licking, it will start melting. And since the edges are thinner, they will eventually melt first. So you only have one last job to do. Lick like your life depends on it.
despite having the highest difficulty shape, you completed successfully, just in time, making it to the third round. 79 players are dead. After returning to the dorm, a dispute rises between two players, ending with the death of one of them, which only results in the prize money being increased. After the lights out, a riot erupts. Everyone is fighting. You try to group up with your teammates, but only fail because of the chaos and the lights flashing. In this situation, you need to have a clear mindset about what's more important to you, morals and saving others from the attack, or your life. Obviously, there is no correct answer. Even if you focus on helping the others, you still can survive. But if you decide being selfish and saving yourself, the best way is not attacking nor defending. You must hide. But with a place like this where even the bets are falling off, where can you hide? Well, the best hiding spot is under the dead bodies. In this kind of situation, no one will waste his time to check under dead bodies. The riot ends and 27 players are dead. It's the next day, and the third game is about to start. The broadcast announced that you have to make teams of 10 players. You tried forming a team with strong players, but ended up with the exact opposite. Six men, three girls, and an old man. Then the game is announced. It's tug of war. You f***ed up again. Your opening team is formed of only men, but tug of wars might seem all about strength, but there is always a way. First off, the leader is really important. He is the closest to the leader of the opposition, and everyone in the team is looking at the back of the leader. If he seems weaker or dispirited, then the game is already over. Then you need someone dependable, like the anchor of a ship at the end. Placing people is also important. Place the rope in the middle and people go on alternating sides. Place your feet straight forward and stick the rope between your armpits. That way you can put in all your strength. And lastly, this is the most important thing. When the game starts for the first 10 seconds, you just have to hold out. You should practically lay down and push your abdomen up to the sky. If you do that, the other team won't be able to pull you to their side. After 10 seconds, the opposition team will get frustrated, thinking, why won't they even budge? Because they would have believed that they were much stronger. If you do that for 10 seconds, there will be a moment when their rhythm breaks. And when that happens... You managed to pull the opponent team a few steps, but they got their rhythm back and start pulling again. What you need to do in this situation is again a way to break their rhythm. And if you do this trick, you can even make them trip and fall down. Everyone needs to make three steps forward and then start pulling again. <laughs> You barely passed the third game. After returning to the dorms, this time you must be prepared for another riot when the lights are off. You should set up a barricade for protection with your teammates and take turns keeping watch while others sleep. Luckily, this time there were no attacks since the leader of the attacking team is afraid from his teammates betraying him. It's the next day and players are told to pair up. You decide to pair up with the old man worrying that he stays as the old one out without a teammate and die. Again, this is not the best way to increase your chances of winning. But who am I to tell you not to prioritize your morals than increasing your chances of living? The game is then announced. Everyone is told to play a marble game of their choice against their partner. Each player have 20 marble and whoever gets all their partner's marbles within 30 minutes will win. A surprise to everyone who thought they will be teaming up with their partners. One of you will have to die. You decide to play with the old man a not or even beating game. A game where you take turns holding a specific number of marbles and the other player have to guess if it's odd or even. If he answers correctly, he gets the number of marbles he bets. In this situation, some players resorted to deceiving. Some players just give up to their partners. But meanwhile, you are at a disadvantage against the old man. You only have one marble left. After you placed your final bet, it was wrong again. But the old man asked you, what was your bet? You then remember that he suffers from failing memory. In a situation where you are risking your life, you decide to use his sickness against him. After a few minutes, you won 19 of his marbles. And just when you are about to play the final game, the old man reveals that he knew you were tricking him this whole time, despite his failing condition. But he allows you to win anyway because you were the only one nice to him. Such a wholesome end. Only 16 players are still alive and they are all devastated because this time they were the ones responsible for killing their partners. In the fifth game, the broadcasts announced that you have to choose a number from the 16 jackets and that this is the order you're gonna be playing the next game. Everyone rushes for the middle numbers since they don't know which side is the lucky one. Starting off first and having enough time to finish or starting last and learning from the mistakes of the others. After all the jackets were taken while you were deciding, you ended up choosing the last jacket, which is number 16. The game is then announced. Glass, stepping stones. 
Each stepping stone is made with either of two types of glass, tempered glass and normal glass. Tempered glass is strong enough to hold even two players' weight. However, normal glass will break even if just one player steps on it. You need to guess which one is made of tempered glass and steps only on those to cross to the other side safely and pass the game. So now the rules are clear, you actually ended up choosing a safe number. But the problem is there is a timer of 16 minutes. If the front players don't make it in time, it's game over for you. The first player starts crossing just by guessing, and eventually the numbers of players started to decrease. But that's a 50-50 chance, we need to increase that. A possible way of crossing is by walking on the edges of the bridge. But that's too risky, so I wouldn't do that myself, but instead recommend it to the other players and see how it will turn out. Another way is to pay attention to the edges of the glass. Tempered glass have smooth and even edges because of the extra processing it goes through. On the other hand, if the glass is not tempered, the edges are rough. But none of that happened and the players just kept guessing and throwing each other when the front player refuses to move. Some of them even forgot which tile is safe and which is the trick one. So to avoid that, it's better to come up with an easy way to remember them. You can for example assign numbers, 0 to a safe tile on the left and number 1 to a safe tile on the right. In that way, all you need to remember is a sequence of zeros and ones. Less than 3 minutes is left. Only 3 tiles are left when one of the players said that he can tell between the two types of glass, since he was working in glass manufacturing. He can differentiate by the color of the reflected light on the glass. After getting 2 correct tiles, the host of the game turned off the light. 20 seconds before the game ends. But the player couldn't tell the difference anymore. Worried about the time, the player behind him pushed him revealing the last trick tile and crossed safely. Three players are left, they are the finalists. The three of you are given a change of clothes, a fancy dinner and a knife. After the lights out, you notice that one of the players is injured because of the glass from the last game. As you rush to call for the staff, you turn to only find out that the other player has killed her because he worried they stopped the game because of her injury. And as the third clause from the agreement state, if the majority agree to end the game, all players will be sent home without the money. So all is left now is two players. The sixth and final game is the squid game. It's called squid because it's played on a court shaped like one. Plays are divided into two groups, the offense and defense. Once the game starts, the defense can run around on two feet within the boundary. But the offense outside the court is only allowed to hop on only one foot until the attacker crosses the waist of the squid and passes the defense. After that, they are allowed to run on both feet. For the final battle, all the attackers gather at the entrance of the squid. They need to tap the small closed off spaces on the squid's head with their foot to win. But if the defense manages to push them outside the squid's boundaries, then the offense will lose the game. Since there are only two players left, there will be only one attacker and one defender. There is no need to hold anymore. It's either kill or be killed. Through one sand that the opponent's eye may be one of the oldest and cheapest tricks to win a match, but it always works. After getting to the entrance of the squid, all you need to do is tap the closed off space on the squid's head. But feeling frustrated because of the incident of yesterday, you decide to beat the opponent before tapping. And this is so risky, but as I always say, it all depends on what you prioritize. Your morals and emotions or your chances of living. Come. Be out there. After returning home, you find out that there is actually $40 billion in your account. But what do you think? How do you beat the death games in Squid Game? Let me know by a comment below. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe and see you.